Civil society calls for the investigation of the Nigerian Navy officials allegedly involved in theft of over 8,000 barrels of crude oil. And rift in a dose government gets messier as deputy governor seeks court protection from governor of Bataki. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. A non-governmental organization, Center for Public Accountability, has called on the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ogala, to launch investigation into allegations of involvement of its officers in crude oil theft. A vessel allegedly carrying crude oil suspected to have been stolen was intercepted in the Koko area of Delta State by the Tanita Security Services. The 1,117-ton vessel carrying about eight 1,100 barrels of crude was escorted by some naval officers before it was reportedly intercepted on Wednesday. According to the Tanita operatives upon entrance into the ship, they noticed that the vessel was authorized to carry products by the Navy but did not have any approvals from the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority. Uh, the authority responsible for the regulation of midstream and downstream petroleum operations in Nigeria for the said voyage. Meanwhile, the Navy, in a statement by its Director of Information, Commodore A.O. Ayovon, uh, opposed the motion that the vessel was acting without authorization. The Tanita Security Outfit is a private security company owned by government Ikemopolo, popularly called Tompolo, as ex -Niger, an ex Niger Delta agitator who recently signed a contract with the federal government to protect the oil pipelines. Well, joining us to discuss this uh, is Olufemi Lawson. He's the Executive Director, Center for Public Accountability. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Jo uh, Lawson. Good. Um, let's start by the finger pointing, first and foremost. It, it seems um, the Navy is insisting that they did have authority um, to proceed with whatever the logistics were in um, taking the oil out of the country, even though this private security company of government Ikemopolo, which is Tompolo's company, um, is insisting that there was no pass, there was no authorization by the downstream, um, you know, committee um, for them to take this, carry this crude out of the country. Now, I want to take you back to the um, campaign season up until last year, um, December or I think um, November, the SDP presidential candidate, uh, Prince Adebayo, had raised um, concerns about the oil theft in Nigeria and said, and I quote, that federal government was complicit. Is that where we are today? Yeah, what, 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 what we are seeing you know, unfolding recently clearly justifies you know, statement as such as made by the Prince Adebayo, and of course, opinion of every other Nigerians, including the media and civil society, that the business of oil theft in the Niger Delta is not a business of the boys. It is not a business of the Jerry Camp chiefs. It is not a business of the local village boys in the creeks of the Niger Delta. It is an organized crime aided by institutions that ordinarily should protect oil infrastructures in Nigeria. But unfortunately, the federal government has been looking the other way, chasing petty oil thieves and you know, people who are involved in you know, some form of small-scale bunkery and leaving the main oil thieves you know, alone to keep operating. If you actually know what it takes to put a vessel that can take about 10 tons of crude oil you know, on the waters in the creeks of the Niger Delta, then you know that you do not require the service of a magician to know that this is clearly an organized crime that has institutions of government being involved in it. And when you talk about the institutions of government, the Navy is a you know, major institution that ordinarily, because of the nature of the service, should be in charge of the protection of our oil infrastructures in the country. Unfortunately, the country also came up with another institution that is the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, which has a constitutional and statutory mandate of protecting critical national infrastructure, particularly the 
crude oil pipeline whatever. But if you look at how the NDDC, NSDC have been, you know, stifled over the years, particularly in the last few years, you understand that there are people somewhere who do not actually want people who can protect our national infrastructures to work so that they can continue the business of stealing. And for a country that is struggling economically like ours, today Nigerians are going to be buying foil at about I don't know, 600 naira. Salaries, a lot of states in Nigeria cannot pay salaries. A lot of national infrastructure projects have been abandoned because the country is seemingly broke. But we have a very few people somewhere, somehow, exploiting the commonwealth of the people of Nigeria into their personal pocket, using the institutions of states, which ordinarily should be protecting these infrastructures. And that is where the role of the Navy, Navy came in into play in this case. Be, be, the before, I'm so sorry, people, I'm so sorry. Before we go into the Navy, you just made a statement that, again, takes me back to Mr. President's latest um, address. He, he addressed the nation, um, I think it was last week, um, talking about the situation of things and the removal of fuel subsidy. One of the first things that Mr. President did on the day that he was sworn in was to state that subsidy was gone. Now, for the average person, um, it sounded more like, well, this will be an, a put, will put an end to you know, the oil thefts, the problems that we're having um, in the oil and gas sector. Might I remind you that in a whole year, in a whole year, that's the past year, no monies were actually remitted into the, the coffers of the nation from oil, zero naira. And 75%, according to statistics, of our oil is being illegally transported out of this country. The president did say that a small group of people are the ones who are responsible for, yeah. you know, the theft of oil in this country. Even though he was short of saying that these people, like you said, are using the instruments of state. So who are these people? Why is the government telling us instead of dealing with these people? If they know this group of people, if they know that these people are using the instrument of state, why are they continuously telling us? Um, good luck, Jonathan told us the same story. Former President Buhari told us the same story. Now President Tinubu is telling us a story. Why are they not dealing with this as opposed to telling us what are we supposed to do with this information? Well, I think the story is going to change with the current uh, revelations. It is true that previous governments in Nigeria have failed. That is not contestable. Because what has given birth to private security organizations like Tantita Security manning our oil infrastructure today is the failure of those institutions that should ordinarily protect our national. Ordinarily, we have no need engaging you know, private security consultants to protect our national infrastructures. But because just like the president admitted, a very few people you know, using the instrumentality of the state, have hijacked, you know, the system to the extent that they now take away these resources, make money from it into their private pockets. And that is why I think what we have experienced in the last couple of weeks signifies that there's, there may be, you know, a way out of this. Only a few weeks ago, one vessel was arrested by the, with the help of the same private security firm, Tanjita Security Service, and the, uh, the vessel was destroyed. Again, another vessel, not escorted by the Navy, but operated by naval officers, according to the Tantita Security Service, you know, have been arrested now. Now, it clearly tells you, just like the President has said, that it is a business of the big men. People who ordinarily should protect infrastructures are now being engaged in, you know, in, in sabotage and, you know, sabotaging national economy. That means that there are revelations now and that steps have been taken first visu destroyed now second visu arrested and detained it means we may be on our way out of it if the government can consistently support efforts that will ensure that more of these oil thieves are exposed and are arrested and beyond engaging private security firms to do this job the national security institutions must be re-energized must be restructured to the extent that they cannot do this job. Fantastic. The German military has been very good. The Army, the Navy, the Air Force. If there are elements within the Navy now sabotaging the effort of government, what is needed is for the government to flush these characters out so that this system can work to the benefit of Nigeria. Like I said, if you look at the Nigeria Security Service and Civil Defense Corps, it has, on a number of occasions, 
arrested relatives. But when it arrests these relatives, you know, it does not take that the power to take them to court. In most cases, they are handed over to the EFCC or other you know, prosecuting agencies. But where are those that have been arrested? How many of them have been sent to jail? How many of them who collaborated with officials who should ordinarily be protecting these researchers have been exposed? So we need to encourage a system that will ensure that we begin to name and shame these thieves. And that is why I personally is not uh, so pleased by the fact that the Nava authority said it is investigating this case. In this case, the Nava authorities are on trial themselves. The Navy is on trial. It is going to require an independent you know, inquiry to be considered by the federal government and possibly the Office of the National Security Advisor to actually unravel the truth behind this latest arrest. Hmm. It makes me question the 44 billion, if I'm not mistaken, um, contract that was given to government to Kumpolo. Yes, of course, he has four shown billion. Four, billion. Four, four billion. Four billion, I beg your pardon. Um, he, he has mm, somewhat delivered, but if these, his job is to protect the pipelines and then all he's doing is arrest people who have already stolen the crude, what does this say about his contract and his uh, policing of, of these pipelines? Because, again, I want to take you back to the fact that there was a special investigative um, panel on oil theft and losses, um, and a report was submitted to the National Security Advisor at the time, Baba Gana Mungono, um, and they attributed, of course, what we're talking about here to racketeering um, and lack of proper reporting of crude oil production and illegal refining. Now, again, Prince Adebayo had said that the kind of theft that we are experiencing in the oil sector is not something that some poor fire boys or some militants are capable of. It's high leveled. It's not something that, you know, it's not a few drums of oil. It's a high level of racketeering. Now, he did say, Baba Gana Munguna, and I want to quote him, saying that um, during the assessment, the panel discovered several layers of involvement in illegal oil theft of crude oil and best efforts of the armed forces and other security agencies to combat the activities of oil thefts. The panel also observed that crude oil losses arose from a lack of proper reporting of crude oil production, illegal refining, theft from wellheads, and diversion from sophisticated pipelines. Again, I take you back to my previous question. If we have all of this information, why are we not going to the roots? Because these things are stated, they're in black and white. Many are talking about the political will. If we're talking about political will to deal with it because you keep saying if government does this, if government does this, should we be talking about ifs or asking government to make sure that these things are done? Where is the political will to do this if government and their cronies allegedly uh, have their hand also in the cookie jar? Well, you, you are very correct and I don't want to agree with you to the extent that there has never been the will to bring saboteurs to boo. And that is why Despite a change in the administration of the country, these characters have continued in the business. And I think it is very unfortunate because until we begin to make example of people who sabotage our national economy and interest, we will continue to have reports, even if you like bring the Navy, bring international security agents or the likes. We have reports of oil theft and other sabotage of national interest, just like we're experiencing. But I, what I think the government must do differently this time, is to show the readiness for transparency. And there can be no transparency when you begin to cover up people who have been found to have perpetrated crime against the country, not just against the administration. The theft of crude oil and every other sabotage being experienced are crime against Nigerians, whose commonwealths have been plundered by this very few insignificant you know, mindless uh, looters. So what do we have to do? And what I think must be done, just like we are beginning to see being demonstrated by the new administration, is the fact that there must be arrests at all times when there are cases of suspicion of theft. And processes of interrogating such and investigating such, export must be transparent to the extent that Nigerians will see that the government is really serious about fighting this crime. And when such investigations are done, people must be prosecuted openly in the open court so that it will serve as a deterrent to others who may be interested 
in doing taking same route. So clearly, I agree with you. In the past, the system have failed, government have failed, and why did government fail? If you look at the report in detail, you realize that a lot of persons indicted in this report were people who were working for the government. And you cannot continue to have this kind of character within the government and expect sanity or, an, or expect implementation of such reports that have exposed them, that thank, have exposed their crime. Thank you for leading me to my next question. Interesting. Looking at the list of people that Mr. President has submitted to the floor of the National Assembly for uh, ratification or, of course, um, clearing, um, these are some people who have one way or the other been... Um, recycled. These are people who have been in government, who one way or the other might also have some things hanging over their head, especially issues of oil uh, theft. Um, and when you talk about the fact that these are the same people that have been fingered one way or another, um, with these people finding their way back into government, how will it be easy for the government of Tinubu to deal with the said situation? But no, th Thank you very much. I think uh, as Nigerians, we must not awesomely surrender our faith or how we want our country to be governed into the hand of the president or these few people who are in the National Assembly. Very correct. A lot of persons... Oh, I'm so, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. But these, are, these people came to us to ask for our vote, to work for us, to serve us. And so, of course, a chunk of the duties are in their hands. We cannot in any way look over them and say, oh, well, we can't leave everything to them. But that's their duty. They asked for the job, and their job is to make sure that things change. So I don't agree yes. with you that we shouldn't just leave it to them. It's their job. Yes, yes. And at, at every given time, at every given time, we must make them understand that they are servants of the people. We must stop elevating them above the people. We must make them understand that it is beyond their appointment. Even those who have used one means or the other to find their way into making the Federal Executive Council list or every other appointment in government. We must understand that it does not end there. We, must, we have seen situations, situations in this country where the media have played critical role in exposing people who got into office using forged fake documents who have perjured in the past. And even eight months after the appointment, they were removed from office. So we must continue to do the same thing to the extent that even if the president have wrongfully uh, you know, engaged anyone into the service of the government, we must sustain our demand for transparency and accountability to the extent that such persons are shown the way out of office, even after they must have been appointed, or when they are not performing the duties as expected by Nigerians. So we must look at it beyond the fact that they have been appointed or screened or cleared by very few people to the extent that it is about our destiny as Nigerians and we must sustain the demand for transparency and accountability. Um, you know, civil society now, because you see, um, I, I, I was talking to a few people about how the place of civil society in Nigeria, and many have said that uh, civil society now goes to the highest bidder, including our labor groups. And I don't necessarily want to agree with that in totality, but is there a reason why people think that civil society and labor are not doing their job or have jettisoned their responsibility uh, because of bias or you know being bought over by the government in power. No, no, I don't want I don't want to agree with people who hold such opinion. In every society, even among the disciples, you know, in the Christian religion of our Lord Jesus Christ, just 12 people, and there was a Judas. So talk about you know issues that have to do with millions of people. In every society, there will always be elements who can you know who are ready for trade who are ready to you know compromise their conscience and their belief but in any way i don't want to agree that the labor and the society have been compromised there are elements within every sector including the religious organizations that have been compromised it happens in every society but still nigeria still has a formidable <coughs> labor movement nigeria still has a formidable civil society movement that is still living up to the expectation of you know, monitoring and checkmating the excesses of government. And so for those who hold the opinion that because of the new order that the civil society is already bought, the labor is compromised, I'm not of that opinion. There are lots of civil society organizations doing fantastic work to ensure that this country is run in a transparent and accountable manner. There are a lot of people within the labor movement today who are ready to sacrifice it all to ensure that the right and welfare of the workers in Nigeria are protected. So 
People may hold our opinion, but it is not a general perception of who we are as Nigerians or who we are as labor leaders or society, you know, leaders. Short term and long term, um, because we can't keep talking about the problems and not seek solutions. And I like to talk about what we can do in the interim while we wait for the long term plans to mature. So in the short term, let's start with that. How do we deal with this situation? Because the more crude we lose, the more money we're losing, and the worse our economy becomes. And we've seen that oil prices have crashed and somewhat tried to stabilize. Again, our economy is facing the hardest hit downturn ever. Uh, and you know, of course, we're being told every other day to tighten our belt uh, until probably we no longer have what to tie the belt around. So what do we do in the interim? In moving forward, the government must show its willingness to deal with this situation by ensuring that whoever is found culpable of being involved in oil theft and every form of criminality you know, is brought to go. This particular process has to be investigated to the extent that whoever has been found to have compromised the process is exposed. Number two, government must invest in national security, particularly those institutions that are empowered to protect our critical national infrastructures. I want to especially use this opportunity to appreciate the men and officers of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps. They have been doing a lot of fantastic work as far as the protection of critical infrastructures, the oil pipeline, and despite their very limited you know, capacity and resources. And that is why you know, the current leadership of the Corps you know, must be commended. So government need to encourage institutions like this, the civil defense, you know, and other paramilitary and military organizations to the extent that the welfare of their personnel and training and everything is taken care of, so that they will not be willing to compromise the work that they have been, you know, mandated to do. But what about what about the already compromised guys? What about the guys who tasted money from yes, ill-gotten wealth? What happens we to those people? Because it, yes, I mean, the get the bad eggs out, bring credible and intelligent people in, and the system will move forward. Interesting. What about synergy um, across the board for these security agencies? Because again, I do remember at some point when Governor Wike raised, former Governor Wike raised the alarm about you know um, security agencies being in cahoots with these oil thefts, um, oil thieves. I beg your pardon. He mostly mm -hmm. fingered the um, NSCDC and of course the Naval Police. And this is not news per se, of course, because the Navy is now involved in this imbroglio. Um, but then, as much as you applaud the NSCDC and, you know, say that they're doing their best, how do we get a synergy of sorts among all of these security agencies, at least for between the ones who maybe have not necessarily tested the monies from these ill-gotten wealth, but um, how do we make sure that that happens so that there's, you know, some form of um, joint efforts to make sure that we put an end to this dastardly act? Yeah, thank you very much. The best way out of this is to ensure that these agencies work together towards achieving one you know, objective of protecting our national infrastructures, particularly preventing oil theft. In the most circumstances, we find these organizations working across purpose, never going one direction. The you know the even in this same Niger data, there's a there's a joint task force comprising of the civil defense, the navy, the you know, but those ones are working in another direction. So government must ensure that these agencies are brought together to work together. And you know, specific mandates are given to those institutions that have primary responsibilities, like the civil defense, like the Navy. While they are being supported by other you know, organizations like the Army, the, you know, the Air Force, when needed, the police when necessary, so that they work together for pursuing the same objective, so that we don't find JTF working in one direction, Civil defense working in the other direction, Navy working in an opposite direction. So the, the government must ensure that they come together to work in the overall interest of the society, and that is one way we can nip this criminality in the board. All right. Well, Olufemi Lawson is the Executive Director Center for Public Accountability. Always a pleasure to have you here advocating for stuff like this. Thank you so much for speaking with us. My pleasure. All right. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be discussing the rift between the Edo State Governor and his deputy and all that's been happening. Stay with us.